Pesi i kumestis. In this video, I'm going to talk about confidence interval for a um, slope coefficient. And um, I will just give a very brief introduction. And if you're not familiar with conf the concept of a confidence interval, um, you should definitely read up on this very carefully in the lecture notes. So um, remember our OS estimator, beta one hat, it's basically for every sample, it's giving us a number and an estimate. And we're saying this is our best guess for the unknown population coefficient beta one. But actually sort of, we will always be a little wrong. So we will never get this exactly right. Or the probability of us getting this exactly right is zero. And this is not because we're using um, a bad estimator. This is just, uh, what this will happen for every estimator that attempts to um, estimate you know, one number and give one precise number. Given that we, you know, that we have just a small sample, we will never um, be able to get the exactly the right number. And maybe it is just um, sort of the, the wrong idea to, to try to give one precise number or to give to give a point estimate. Instead, we could give um, a set of possible values. And such a set of possible values is called a confidence interval. And so what we're going to do is instead of just giving one number, we give a whole interval of numbers. So we're going to say, here's sort of this interval of numbers and they are all, you know, good guesses of the true beta one. Um, we cannot rule out any of those. And what we're actually going to do sort of the beta one hat is our best guess in a way. So we, we put that in the middle, but we, um, we put some padding to the left and to the right, just to account for uncertainty due to, um, due to our sampling error. So let's put the confidence interval for beta one. So it is sort of this interval from the, this lower bound to this upper bound and this lower bound will be the center of the interval minus you know, this distance. And it's a good idea to take this to be the standard error of beta one hat uh, times C alpha and you know, C alpha as before is this quanta and the upper bound here of the interval will have the same, the same uh, distance from the center. So now we're adding this. So the total length of the interval that we are reporting will be two times standard error times C alpha. So um, thinking about constructing such an interval, um, be, before we draw the sample, we have to think of this interval as a random quantity. So we can talk about probabilities. For example, we can talk about the probability that the true beta one is contained in this interval. So it's somewhere 
here and this probability is actually given by one uh, to be this is actually one minus alpha and this is called the confidence level so again we think of alpha as a small number so that the confident we're covering the truth with probability fairly close to one now we can think of some comparative statics for example if alpha is particularly small so the confidence level is very close to one so that or think about of you know decreasing alpha so moving the confidence at alpha level to be closer to one that means that then we are looking at a higher quantile of the normal distribution so a larger number so c alpha would become larger and the width of the confidence interval would increase and that's quite intuitive so if we want to be more certain that we're covering the truth we um, should report a larger interval also what happens if for some reason the standard deviation of beta 1 hat increases so we um, get a more uncertain a more imprecise estimator of beta 1 well if the standard deviation increases we expect other so the standard error to reflect this and to also increase so if there's if we have a um, less precise estimator of beta 1 that means again the width of the um, confidence interval increases so we have to report a larger set of possible values due to the increased uncertainty